Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to be able to present you some key highlights of our project, Science-Driven and Farmer-Oriented Insect Pest Management for Cowpea Agroecosystem in West Africa. So this is a team effort by IITA, MSU, INERA in Burkina Faso, INRAN and University of Maradi in Niger and University of Ilorin in Nigeria. A quick recap of uh, the activities we had scheduled to carry out in FY20. Basically, three key areas of intervention, biological control with experimental releases of parasitoids, also looking at the behavior of the parasitoids in field of finding capacity, and also assessing factors um, enabling the establishment of the parasitoids, particularly uh, the interactions with uh, uh, cultivated and wild host plants. Uh, the second area was around biopesticides, uh, looking at the efficiency of available new isolates, but also scaling out the production and delivery of the neem tea bag technology. And the third area was on capacity development, we had planned exchange visit for technicians and researchers, focus group research, particularly looking at development of educational materials towards scaling of content, and also to expand uh, the farmer interface application as a decision-making tool. Now let's look at what we were actually able to achieve in, in 2020. So starting with biological control, yes, we were able to carry out the experimental releases of Therophilus javanus in Nigeria as scheduled, but that was a big challenge because of the closure of land borders due to COVID-19. And in the past, we used to basically carry our live uh, parasitoids in the car, uh, drive to the next country and do the releases basically the same day or the day after. Uh, that was very simple. Uh, this days with the closure of the land borders we had to resort to a different type of logistics uh, and the first one was to use courier services but here the challenge was that we had to make sure that uh, there were for instance direct flights between Cotonou and Lagos and then that the driver from uh, IATA Baden will come down to the facilities of the courier service at uh, the airport in Lagos, pick the shipment, bring it to Ibadan, where our collaborator from Ilorin uh, was waiting with the quarantine people to inspect the shipment and eventually bring it to Ilorin for the releases in the next few days. So you see, it was, it was really not an easy task to carry out, but we actually succeeded and we were very happy about that. I also need to mention again at this point that all our importations and releases of natural enemies are covered by official permits by the regulatory authorities in each of the countries. And you can see here the example, for instance, for Nigeria. Now in Nigeria, we released uh, about 6,000 individuals at five different locations around Ilorin. And you can see it here. So this is Ilorin, and this is about 60 kilometers from Ilorin. Uh, what is important to note here is that uh, this uh, system of small creeks and small rivers, uh, which provides uh, green vegetation, host plants for the parasitoids and for Maruca during the dry season where no cowpea is cultivated. So this, this is uh, vital for the establishment and the survival of the parasitoids during the dry season. We also continue to scale out the releases that we had initiated during the initial activity in 2019 uh, in Burkina Faso and Niger. And um, uh, also here, same problem, the closure of the land borders. But this time, the courier services could not assure that uh, there will be a timely delivery of the parasitoid. They mm, would have spent maybe one or two days in transit in Abidjan. So we had to, this time, looking at commercial air carriers. And the challenge here was to convince them that carrying those uh, live insects would not be uh, a danger, uh, a hazard for them and the passengers in the plane. 
and uh, uh, eventually we succeeded in that and so we were able to carry out the releases. Uh, we released about 12,000 parasitoids at seven locations, uh, four in Nigeria and Burkina Faso and uh, three in Niger. Um, quickly some details of the Niger uh, Burkina releases here. Um, the same habitats, basically uh, creeks and uh, small rivers. What is important to note is also this uh, big irrigation scheme. So uh, enough uh, moisture and vegetation also during the dry season to, to assure the survival of the parasitoids. In Niger, uh, we released on, on cowpea plots around um, Maradi, but also in an area where we had uh, forests and uh, vegetation and there was a creek down here, a river or down here which ensure the necessary moisture to keep the vegetation uh, during the dry season. Uh, it needs to be noticed, and this is uh, really, we are happy about this, that the parasitoids released in 2019 with the initial activities was recovered uh, from the field in both countries, although still from few locations, but this is a really encouraging news and we are on the right path. Um, so also during the initial activities, we had started with uh, 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 initial colony rearing uh, uh, of the parasitoids in both countries. And this now has been expanded uh, in 2020. And actually in Burkina Faso, we were able to do some releases using parasitoids produced locally uh, from the inner uh, labs. And then we wanted to look at the host finding behavior of the parasitoids. And I'm sure you remember uh, Cynthia on this picture that was taken in 2016 when we had the official releases, the first official releases of the parasitoids in Benin. And uh, we used uh, for that purpose, these big cages and we, which were quite uh, useful and gave good results in terms of uh, measuring parasitism. And we thought would be using the same approach now to study the, uh, the host finding behavior of the parasitoid. Uh, it has been used for some parasitoids uh, with success, but unfortunately our parasitoid was a bit peculiar because when it's released in the cages, it just, uh, basically stayed on the walls and didn't move for for many hours. Uh, maybe attracted by the, some static charges or color, the texture, uh, we don't know exactly. Of course, the parasitoid eventually moved down to the plant and parasitized Maruca, but, but uh, not very useful if you need to do very detailed observations uh, and time them. So this, these cages can still be used for quantitative parasitization tests, but for the host finding behavior, we had to resort to different methodology. And that was actually not too difficult because as we found out, uh, our parasitoids uh, is, is a very docile animal. So once released in the, in the, in the, in the field on a cowpea plant, it doesn't really move too much and you can observe it uh, very easily and we had captured that now in a video which I'm going to show you and uh, so basically let me quickly stop here and show you some details. So this is the ovipositor, the slender one and these are the ovipositor sheets where the ovipositor rests uh, when it's not used. And as you can see here, the, uh, the, the parasitoid is using the ovipositor to drill through the flower. And this is kind of a breakthrough observation. We didn't know about that until we really noticed that really in the field because our lab studies were not using flowers, were using just a larvae. And we thought the parasitoids would also uh, just parasitize larvae in the open space. But here now we have the proof that the parasitoids can really drill through the flower, find the suitable larvae and parasitize it, as you can see from here. So this, we are really very happy to have 
done this experience and to have made this movie. With regard to biopesticides, we have uh, focused our work on this pest here, uh, the pot sucking bug Clavigralla tomentosicollis. And this is what happens to the same guy if it comes too close to our biopesticide, an entomopathogenic fungus called Buveria bassiana. Um, just uh, looking at the example of Niger, we have compared different uh, biopesticides with a chemical insecticide and treat control in their ability to reduce pot bog populations using uh, both um, a susceptible local variety and an improved variety which is a little bit more field tolerant. So if we look at uh, the population levels in the untreated control, the population is quite high and substantially higher as all the other pesticide treatments and comparable uh, results have been obtained also on the, on the tolerant variety. And this is also confirmed by yields. And if you look at the yields uh, of the untreated control is much lower than uh, generally the trends of the yields in the pesticide treatments. Now, uh, another important uh, activity uh, that we already started uh, in the initial activity phase was uh, the scaling of the Nim tea bag in Niger. And so this is a picture we took to during that time. And um, basically our team in Niger has done a great job in uh, providing a, a game changer. Uh, this easily transportable motorized mills um, to grind the neem grains because this is really a big uh, time saver and also can reduce the drudgery of the women involved in the community-based production units. Uh, so, so an enormous improvement over the traditional method of using the mortar to, to grind the, the neem grains. Uh, as I speak now, we have probably produced over 3,000 neem tea bags, uh, of which two thirds have already been sold. Uh, over to capacity development, and this unfortunately is, is the activity <coughs> which has been impacted uh, most severely by COVID-19. Uh, for instance, group training for the neem tea bag production had to be reduced substantially and only six participants could take part. All of them were women from the three production union, units. Uh, uh, training topics included the identification of insect pests, how to fight those pests with nature-based solutions, of course, including the neem tea bag how to prepare it, how to apply it in the field, and then some basic skills in agricultural entrepreneurship and also basic skills, how to assemble, operate and maintain those uh, mechanized mills. Other capacity development activities included degree-related training. So we were able to recruit one PhD and two MSc students in both Burkina Faso and Niger, all female. Uh, the farmer interface application has been expanded to include a scouting protocol with voice commands uh, as part of the cross-cutting activity. And also uh, an unexpected uh, but very welcome addition was uh, to start to produce a new uh, Sabo animation on the production and delivery of Nim tea bags. And this is very important because its educational contents can be translated in different languages with a potential impact beyond Niger. So the lessons learned uh, in 2020 uh, we have been able to carry out uh, the releases of biocontrol agents thanks to improved logistics in spite of uh, COVID-19. We had some unexpected challenges uh, in the behavioral studies, but we, were, uh, we have been able to mitigate that by in-field observations, and now they will be complemented by chemical ecology studies 
in the next season. Uh, the good news that our parasitoids is established at few locations in Burkina Faso and Niger after the initial releases. And the game changer, uh, our small mechanization units, um, which can really enormously improve the output of the women-led community production units for the tea, NIM tea bags. And unfortunately, the, the, the major impact of COVID-19 on our capacity development and socio-economic activities. So like the exchange visit had to be canceled altogether. The focus group research is postponed and the group training, as you have seen, has been enormously reduced. So at this point, I would like to thank uh, sincerely USAID through the Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Legume Re System Research at MSU for supporting our work. And also I wanted to thank my IPM team on the ground for uh, really sticking to the work during this difficult time. And thanks to all of you for listening.